front. We're going to start with a, a well-known, an old hymn called Soon and Very Soon. Ready? Where's Mark at? Mark's in the back. We're going to start with a well-known older hymn called Soon and Very Soon. Uh, the words will be on the screen. Uh, but, uh, it also is number 677 in your hymnal if you'd prefer. But we can uh, stand together and uh, worship with uh, Soon and Very Soon. We are going to see the King. Soon and very soon We are going to see the King Soon and very soon We are going to see the King Soon and very soon We are going to see the King Hallelujah, hallelujah We are going to see the King, no more crying them, we are going to see the King, no more crying them, we are going to see the King, no more crying them, we are going to see the King, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to continue our worship with a reading uh, from 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50 through 57. The scripture says, Brothers, I tell you this, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, and corruption cannot inherit incorruption. Listen, I am telling you a mystery. We will not all fall asleep, but we will be changed in a moment, in the blink of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we will be changed. For this corruptible must be clothed with incorruptibility, and this mortal must be clothed with immortality. When this corruptible is clothed with incorruptibility and this mortal is clothed with, clothed with immortality, then the saying that is written will take place. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Now the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through, Jesus, through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to continue with a uh, patriotic favorite. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is planting out the vintage where the rapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth. Marching on, he has sounded forth the trumpet that will never go retreat. He is setting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. 
Hold me swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubile at my feet, while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. With a glory in his bosom that transfigured you and me As he died to make men holy Let us die to make men free While God is marching on Glory, glory, hallelujah We're going to sing another hymn about the Lord's return. It's called, What If It Were Today? Jesus, Jesus is coming to earth again. What if it were today? Coming in power and love to reign. What if it were today? Coming to claim his chosen bride, all the redeemed and purified. Over this whole earth scattered wide. What if it were today? Amen. What a wonderful truth. Let's uh, continue singing, What If It Were Today? Jesus is coming to earth again, what if it were today? Coming in power and love to reign, what if it were today? Coming to claim his chosen bride, all the redeemed and purified, over the soul.
A newer, a newer hymn um, called Holy Spirit, and uh, just a great reminder that uh, we need the Holy Spirit to continue working in our lives. So we'll sing, uh, stand, we'll continue standing to sing Holy Spirit. Thank you to our musicians this morning. Right. 
Lance over here for. Well, it's great to see each of you here this morning, and thank you for joining us in worship. Uh, if you're visiting with, this mo- with us this morning, it's great to have you here. Um, if you're here and you're regularly with us, uh, thanks for coming back again. And if you're watching us online, it's great to be seen. But uh, what a privilege to worship God together this morning, and uh, for those of you that came to church just to hear these words, happy 4th of July. You may go home now. <laughs> now it's uh, fun that we get to uh, celebrate our Independence Day on a Sunday and worship together. Um, and I want to thank uh, Patty for selecting the songs this morning. Thank you for that. Much appreciated. Well, we're going to take a moment here for our offering. So if our ushers would come for the offering this morning. And... Um, while they're coming, I do want to thank you for your support of First Baptist Church. Um, and if you're visiting with us this morning, we do not ask you to, we do not want you to feel obligated to give in the offering. But let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're just thankful for the privilege of serving and praising the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you that we get to continue to praise you by giving back uh, by faith a small portion of what you have graciously given to us. Lord, give us wisdom and humility to use this for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Make you feel. Well, this morning we're going to um, celebrate the Lord's table together and um, remember all that He's done for us. Um, we're going to continue doing it the way we have before of everybody coming and taking some. But as part of his internship, I've asked Caleb if he would come and administer the Lord's table for us this morning. So, Caleb? And if you'd turn the red mic up so we can hear him. Um, Join me in a reading from Matthew 26, starting in verse 26 and ending in verse 29. Now as they're eating, Jesus took bread And after blessing it, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many of the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. As believers, we get the the joy to join Uh, Christ in his sacrifice and we get to remember him it's an active remembrance that we get to participate in his body and blood 
So if you are a believer today, come and join with us as we um, remember Jesus' sacrifice and also remembering the hope that we have in his kingdom, the hope that we have in the future coming, and that the next time we'll be taking this with Jesus is when we're with him in heaven. Um, so that, that's what God has blessed me with today. Um, so please join us in this. Um, feel free to come up and, and you know, grab a cracker and grab a, the juice as well. Yeah, if uh, this side wants to start first and work our way down, and then uh, we'll work through the middle and then this side as well. So now as uh, together, um, as we are one in Christ, I, um, we would, uh, I would have you guys take the, uh, the bread that has been broken for us, and, uh, and you can eat of that now. And the, uh, the blood that was poured out for our sins, take and drink.
All right. Thank you, Caleb. And uh, what a privilege of rejoicing in our Lord's uh, sacrifice for us and remembering that. We're going to continue our service with some time for prayer this morning. Um, actually, actually, yeah, we're going to do prayer and then after that announcements. So we'll do... Um, Oh, I see. I forgot. Never mind. Yeah, I got to cover. Um, so we have a couple of announcements this morning. I almost got distracted with this order of service. So, uh, Elizabeth, would you come and uh, share with us about the Five Day Club? And if we could uh, get the red mic up again. Good morning. Our Five Day Club is coming up on July 12th through 16th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. each night. And um, we do have some flyers in the back, so please take some and invite your family, friends, and neighbors. Um, also, if you plan on bringing your children, please let us know so we can uh, try to have um, a head count of how many we'll have. Um, also, we could still use some help. So if you would like to help with recreation or crafts, or if you would like to help by making a meal for the people who will be working, uh, we would love to have you. Um, so please let me know after the service if you would like to help in one of those areas. Um, also, if you are helping, I will have a brief meeting next Sunday um, for those who are helping so we can go over a couple of uh, questions and things uh, that come up. Thank you. All right, um, last Sunday we had our annual meeting. So I uh, wanna thank those that put the work in for that um, to go as well as it did. So uh, we have a few people to thank, uh, but we have um, Rachel who's not here, who coordinated with the, uh, the food. Oh, there she is. Hi, Rachel. So we thank Rachel who coordinated with the food. And uh, also we have um, Stan who chaired the meeting and Risa who, who took notes. We have Lester who put all of the uh, uh, papers together for the, uh, um, what was that document called? The, the report, there we go. All, the, all right, yeah, that, that thing. Um, and uh, uh, waited patiently, very patiently for me as I took about four months to get mine in. Fortunately, we had about six months uh, to, to, for delay for our meeting. So, but um, and then um, uh, thank all of you who participated in the meeting. Uh, it was another wonderful time together, uh, rejoicing in what God is doing and looking for or what He has done, and looking forward to what He will continue doing. Um, so, I want to say many thanks for that. I thought that Mark. I thought that was the uh, the moment. <laughs> we had a so we'll um, did I miss any announcements this morning anything anything coming up that I need to announce that I forgot okay well we'll take a few minutes here for some prayer requests while our choir comes uh, the choir will be singing in just a minute but we're going to take some time for prayer here first um and let's see, I did, I think, I did put it here. We do have, we've been praying for Barb Williams, our dear sister. If you don't know who Barb is, uh, when Barb is present, she always sits in the back corner here on my right, your left, and uh, just a sweet lady. Um, she doesn't talk a whole lot, so you might not have had much chance to talk with her. She tends to be more quiet, but she's been faithfully part of this church for many years. And she wrote us a little note, so I want to read this for you. Um, it says, uh, Big Rock Church family, thank you so much for the cards, phone calls, and prayers. My doctor told me the other day that my treatment is going the way it's supposed to and everything is fine. I'm so grateful for all your prayers. Keep them coming, Barb. So we'll keep... Uh, Thank you from Barb and keep her in prayer. 
Um, also, I want to keep Ed Evans in prayer. Um, I still don't know exactly what his status is, uh, but I know he took a bad fall um, about a week and a half, almost two weeks ago. And uh, did you have an update on Ed? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. All right, for those who couldn't hear, Ed is improving, um, and he's been moved to Mary and Joy to continue his uh, rehab. So um, thank God for the improvement. Um, let's keep Eddie in prayer, uh, similar to um, um, uh, Scott Lair. Both of them are getting closer to being with the Lord, though for different reasons, but they're both. So keep Eddie in prayer, um, as I know he's just uh, really struggling um, through this time. Any other praises or prayer requests this morning? Yes, sir. Yeah, we'll keep uh, justice in prayer, dealing with his poison ivy. Oh. You know, if he's up for a bad dad joke, you could, when you get home, you could ask him which was worse, the, the, the poison ivy or being in church. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Yeah, we'll keep Eddie's, um, uh, Eddie's mother, Emma, in prayer, asking that the Lord would uh, bring her to repentance and salvation. Yeah. Any other praises or prayer requests this morning? All right, we'll take a minute here and pray together. Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for the privilege of worshiping and praising the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Just ask that you would be with each of us this morning as our hearts are tuned to worship you. But we do want to lift up some of the uh, uh, praises and burdens that we uh, share together in our body. Um, and so, Lord, we do thank you for the, impro uh, the, the successful work of the treatments for Barb and ask that you continue to strengthen her and provide healing for her. Lord, thank you for Ed and his improvement. I ask that you'd continue to provide uh, strength and a quick recovery for him. Uh, Lord, we do want to lift up um, uh, Eddie Barr and the uh, uh, the, the end of life um, cancer battle that he is dealing with, and ask that you'd provide uh, grace and strength for him. And Lord, it'd be our desire that he would be here on this earth a little bit longer and that you'd provide some healing as well. Lord, we do continue to lift up Pastor Howard and his uh, and Edith and ask that you'd provide the, the long-term housing that they are going to need. Uh, Lord, for Ellie and uh, her serving you in the Marines so that you'd provide safety for her um, and uh, protection, uh, both physically and spiritually. Uh, Lord, we also would like to um, lift up uh, John and Zenoa and ask that you'd provide strength for them. Uh, for Dee and Betsy, that you would give them the comfort that they need. And Lord, for Dee, in addition, as he is still recovering from the accident, uh, that, the, uh, that his body would heal quickly. For our sister Heidi and her continued health issues, Lord, uh, with the uh, swelling in her legs and, and other challenges she's dealing with, that you'd provide healing for her. Uh, Lord, for Scott and Donna Lair, I ask that you'd give Donna strength as she cares for Scott and also peace um, in her spirit and comfort in this painful time. And Lord, I pray that you'd give Scott the clarity that he needs to continue worshiping you. Lord, for our brother Dick and the whole Burlingame family, we ask for comfort. Um, Lord, comfort for Dick and for Keith and the loss of their spouses. Um, and Lord, comfort for the whole family. 
Um, and uh, Lord, I pray that you'd give us the wisdom uh, that we need to be able to care for uh, Dick and his family in this painful time. Lord, for Karen and her, and her continued cancer battle, we ask that you would provide healing for her and strength as she uh, battles this disease. Lord, also for Jan and her upcoming hip surgery and recovery, Lord, I pray that you'd provide a, a successful surgery and a quick recovery for her. Lord, we do want to lift up our nation. Oh, we also want to lift up uh, justice. I forgot justice and uh, the poison ivies that he's dealing with, that you would provide quick healing for him and uh, that you'd give uh, wisdom and grace um, to Kelly as she's caring for him this morning. Lord, for Eddie's mother, uh, Emma, and uh, her need for trusting you as Lord and Savior, Lord, we ask you would draw her heart to you and bring her to a place of repentance and salvation. And lastly, Lord, we lift up our nation's leaders. As you've commanded us to do, we ask that they would recognize that you are God in heaven, and most importantly, Lord, that they would put their faith and trust in you as Lord and Savior. And uh, Lord, for the, any hearts that are heavy this morning, I ask that you'd be with each one, that they would know your love in a very special and powerful way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, our choir is going to sing, and if the sound board can uh, kind of keep an eye on some of these mics here, so hopefully those who are watching online can hopefully hear the choir. And Rachel. And we have a solo on the blue mic to start off the uh, choir.
All right, children, you can be dismissed for Children's Church. Although it looks like most of you had that figured out already. Can you get the um, the online one? Thank you. Well, if you take your Bibles and open to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter thirty-three. Those of you that know me know I do not plan that far ahead very well. So the fact that we are speaking in a series on God's coming kingdom and it happens to be on a Sunday where we're celebrating Independence Day is a pure coincidence, um, though I think it's a happy coincidence. Uh, we're going to read from I Isaiah 33 and we're going to start in verse 7 and read through verse 16. The scripture says, listen, their warriors cry loudly in the streets. The messengers of peace weep bitterly. The highways are deserted. Travel has ceased. An agreement has been broken. Cities despised and human life disregarded. The land mourns and withers. Lebanon is ashamed and decayed. Sharon is like a desert. Bashan and Carmel shake off their leaves. Now I will rise up, says the Lord. Now I will lift myself up. Now I will be exalted. You will conceive chaff. You will give birth to stubble. Your breath is fire that will consume you. The peoples will be burned to ashes, like thorns cut down and burned in a fire. You who are far off, hear what I have done. You who are near, know my strength. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Trembling seizes the ungodly. Who among us can dwell with a consuming fire? Who among us can dwell with ever-burning flames? The one who lives righteously and speaks rightly, who refuses gain from extortion, whose hand never takes a bribe, who stops his ears from listening to murderous plots and shuts his eyes to avoid endorsing evil. He will dwell on the heights, his refuge will be the rocky fortress, his food provided, his water assured. So in the last couple months, we've been looking at the, uh, part, this part of Isaiah here from chapter 32 um, through chapter 34 or 35, and um, it uh, started off because we're looking at how God is introducing his kingdom even here in the middle of Isaiah. He actually does it throughout the book, but we're looking at this section. And it starts off with um, a sad time in Israel, a sad time of, of loss, of, a, uh, of impending judgment, um, prophesied judgment and dealing with loss from the invasion from Assyria. And the Lord says in chapter 32, verse 1, he says, Indeed, a king will reign righteously and rulers will rule justly. Each will be like a shelter from the wind, a refuge from the rain, like streams of water in a dry land and, a, and the shade of a massive rock in the arid land. So here you have a people, namely in this circumstance, Israel. And this people have been plagued by problems. They have been plagued with selfish, ungodly rulers, which is one of the reasons that they're in this current position. They have been plagued by being uh, invaded, physically had their possessions taken from them. In some cases, had family members killed right in front of them. And here the Lord is bringing, he says, a king will reign righteously and rulers will rule justly. 
something they hadn't seen. These people had not seen that type of behavior. God is prophesying about that which is coming and the hope that it will bring. What I find amazing is that this truth and this prophecy and this hope has transcended and impacted every generation. Because every single human authority rules unjustly and rules selfishly. Even if you go in the book of Isaiah and you look towards the end of the, well, I guess it's the middle, but the last third of the book, you have the King Hezekiah, who King Hezekiah had a fear of the Lord. He did not worship other gods. But even Hezekiah, who worshiped the Lord, he was still a selfish ruler because when, it was, when he was told that his whole kingdom would be given over to uh, the Babylonians, uh, the Chaldeans, and, and that his children would be made eunuchs in the, in, the, in the palace of the king of Babylon, his response was not one of repentance, but one of, whew, glad that's not going to happen to me. Even people who claim to know the Lord and who fear the Lord, guess what? They still rule unjustly and they still rule selfishly because they are dealing with their own personal sin issues. And so this truth has mattered in every generation and I think it matters still today that God's kingdom a king will reign righteously and rulers, those that ever, whoever he appoints and who get their wisdom and understanding from him, those rulers will rule justly. And this is the hope that we have in the Lord. Um, last week, we we're looking at the first part of Isaiah 33 and if you look at the, at the last two verses... Of, uh, uh, that we looked at last week, Isaiah, um, verse 5 and 6 of Isaiah 33, we see that the Lord is exalted, for he dwells on high. He has filled Zion with justice and righteousness. There will be times of security for you, a storehouse of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. So we have God proclaiming that he will be a king and he will rule justly. We also have what his priorities will be in his kingdom. Every kingdom of man bases its power on its wealth. You go like this. That's just a truism, okay? Every kingdom of man bases its power on its wealth. But when you look at the Lord's kingdom... What is his kingdom? In verse 5, it says, He has filled Zion with justice and righteousness. If you look at the middle of verse 6, it says, A storehouse of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. This amazes me. When you think of God's storehouses, when God's storehouse is that which is important, if you went and looked in God's storehouses, you wouldn't find gold. You wouldn't find silver. You wouldn't find any form of denomination that would be accepted. But what would you find if you looked in God's storehouses in his kingdom? You would find salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. God knows that what we need is not physical sustenance. God knows that what we need is not greater uh, financial wealth, God knows that what we need and what he has determined is, is most important is salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. And of course, those being the things that God releases from his storehouse in Zion, the fear of the Lord is the treasure. The fear of the Lord. And then we get into where we're reading today. And one of the fun things about Hebrew is that Hebrew is uh, Hebrew poetry specifically is uh, comparative poetry. All right, so there's, there's almost always a, a positive and a negative, or if it's not positive and negative, it's two ends of a spectrum. 
right? And, and so here we have God making this incredible comparison using the Hebrew language, and the comparison is of that which is like God and that which is not like God. In other words, that which is coming from God's kingdom and that which is coming from the kingdom of men. Right? And this is where we get into in chapter, in verse 7 of chapter 33. So I want you to hear this. And then we're going to look at some scriptures that highlight these different truths. But listen, read with me again verse 7 of chapter 33. It says, listen, their warriors cry loudly in the streets. The messengers of peace weep bitterly. Right? Clearly, God is not describing his warriors, so it has to be the warriors of men. So their warriors, what warriors? All of them, all of the opposite warriors to God. They cry loudly in the streets. The messengers of peace weep bitterly. There's a reason for this. Warriors would cry in public because of epic failure. Warriors do not cry in public. They inspire the public. The only reason they would cry is if they come home full of shame and with no hope. The messengers of peace, the only reason that a messenger of peace would weep bitterly is if that messenger of peace who was motivated enough to put his life on the line to achieve peace failed so epically that it was as if he had never done anything or he made it worse. This is the messengers of peace from the kingdom of men. All of them. The warriors cry loudly. The messengers of peace weep bitterly. The highways are deserted. And travel has ceased. An agreement has been broken. Cities despised and human life disregarded. The land mourns and withers. Lebanon is ashamed and decayed. Sharon is like a desert. Bashan and Carmel shake off their leaves. By the way, the Lord is just giving a, a word picture here of the misery that the land endures. Lebanon was the greatest forest known in this time. And it possibly, if you go back in ancient days, could have been one of the greatest forests of all time. But it was an incredible forest. And he says, this incredible forest will be ashamed and decayed. Right? Sharon, a beautiful, a beautiful valley full of fruit and, and just thriving, thriving uh, uh, for the plants and the, and the animals. And it says, Sharon, this thriving place is like a desert. Bashan and Carmel are mountains, well-known mountains, be full of trees and beauty. They shake off their leaves. They have no more beauty to show. This is what happens when men are in charge. Or women, mankind. Sorry, ladies, you don't get a pass on that. This is what the Lord says about his kingdom in verse 10. Now I will rise up, says the Lord. Now I will lift myself up. Now I will be exalted. You will conceive chaff. You will give birth to stubble. By the way, wonderful, incredibly powerful word picture here. All right, you think of the miracle of conception, the miracle of new life that God accomplishes. And he says that that miracle, the greatest human accomplishment, the creation of life, that will be a, this. All you will conceive is chaff. All that you will give birth to is not life, but to stubble. Once again, this is a word picture, not a literal statement, but it's a word picture of the value that we bring. He says, your breath is fire that will consume you. The peoples will be burned to ashes like thorns cut down and burned in a fire. Does you who are far off hear what I have done? You who are near know my strength. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Trembling seizes the ungodly. Who among us 
can dwell with a consuming fire? Who among us can dwell with ever-burning flames? The one who lives righteously and speaks rightly, who refuses gain from extortion, whose hand never takes a bribe, who stops his ears from listening to murderous plots and shuts his eyes to avoid endorsing evil. He will dwell on the heights. His refuge will be the rocky fortress. His food provided, his water assured. You see the opposing pictures of God's kingdom and all the kingdoms of mankind? One is full of hope and and desire and, and encouragement and beauty, and the other is full of darkness and misery and pain and uselessness. I want to read a couple of passages from Scripture. We're going to start looking at the futility of mankind. I'm just going to read right through these. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 8 through 10 says, Instead, you act unjustly and cheat, and you do this to believers. Don't you know that the, ri- that the unrighteous will not inherit God's kingdom? Do not be deceived. No sexually immoral people, idolaters, adulterers, or anyone practicing homosexuality, no thieves, greedy people, drunkards, verbally abusive people, or swindlers will inherit God's kingdom. Once again, darkness, misery, pain, apart from God's kingdom. Romans 8 verse Romans 1 verse 18 says for God's wrath is revealed from heaven against all godlessness and unrighteousness of people who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth since what can be known about God is evident among them because God has shown it to the, to them for his invisible attributes that is his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen since the creation of the world being understood through what he has made As a result, people are without excuse. For though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or show gratitude. Instead, their thinking became nonsense and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchange the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man, birds, four-footed animals, and reptiles. Therefore, God delivered them over in the cravings of their hearts to sexual impurity so that their bodies were degraded among themselves. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served something created instead of the Creator, who is praised forever. Amen. This is why God delivered them over to degrading passions. For even their females exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. The males in the same way also left natural relations with females and were inflamed with their lust for one another. Males committing shameless act with males and receiving in their own persons the appropriate penalty of their error. And because they did not think it worthwhile to acknowledge God, God delivered them over to a worthless mind to do do what is morally wrong. They They are filled with all unrighteousness, evil, greed, and wickedness. They are full of envy, murder, quarrels, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God haters, arrogant, proud, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, and unmerciful. Although they, f- they know full well God's just sentence that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them. But lest you think that this is only about people outside of Israel during Isaiah's time. No, this is also true of them. If you look at Isaiah chapter 1, verse 4, the scripture says, O sinful nation, people weighed down with iniquity, brood of evildoers, depraved children. That's not a happy list to be part of. 
says they, they have abandoned the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They have turned their backs on him. Why do you want more beatings? Why do you keep on rebelling? The whole head is hurt and the whole heart is sick. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, no spot is uninjured. Wounds, welts, and festering sores, not cleansed, bandaged, or soothed with oil. Your land is desolate. Your cities burned with fire. Foreigners devour your fields before your very eyes. A desolation demolished by foreigners. Daughter Zion is abandoned like a shelter in a vineyard, like a shack in a cucumber field, like a besieged city. If the Lord of hosts had not left us a few survivors, we would, have, we would be like Sodom and we would resemble Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What are all your sacrifices to me, asked the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of well-fed cattle. I have no desire for the blood of bulls, lambs, or male goats. When you come to appear before me, who requires this from you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing useless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons and Sabbaths the calling of solemn assemblies. I cannot stand iniquity with a festival. I hate your new moons and prescribed festivals. They have become a burden to me. I am tired of putting up with them. When you lift up your hands in prayer, I will refuse to, to look at you. Even if you offer countless prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are covered with blood. This is the condition of mankind. This is the condition of all Kingdoms in mankind. No one is free of this subjection to sin and misery. Which is why we have to look forward to God's kingdom being established. God's kingdom is where our hope is at. It has always been where our hope is at. Right? Right? You know, maybe you're like me, and, you know, there was a time in my life, I won't say how long ago because that might seem embarrassing to me, but there was a time that I thought that my, my hope was in electing the right people into office. And if we just get the right people who fear God into office, we'll be on a good track. But you know what? That's not what God's Word says. God's word doesn't say that we need the right human beings to be rulers over us. You know, even David, a man after God's own heart, you know, he did more wrong than just sin with Bathsheba. He was a man who loved God. He was a man that God used. But David committed multiple sins. One of his sins, not the one with Bathsheba, caused God to send a pestilence on the land killing thousands upon thousands of people. Even a good king who loved God could not avoid miserable sin that made everybody's life in the kingdom miserable. He was bound by the same problems that all rulers are bound by and the problems of sin and deception. We need God's kingdom. We, have, we, need, we need not only to be looking for, but we need God to bring his kingdom. And you know what? This is part of our message of hope. Our message of hope, yes, is sins forgiven. Of course, we need our sins forgiven. But it's not just sins forgiven to live in misery. It's not just sins forgiven so that we have to deal with the brunt of people's sin and we have to deal with the attacks of, of sinful people. We did not, God did not save us just to give us no hope. He saved us, yes, to give us an eternal spiritual hope, but he also saved us to give us a physical hope that his, we're trusting in his kingdom. We're looking for his coming. I want to highlight a couple pictures of God's kingdom. 
Actually, I'm just going to shorten this and read one of these. Revelation 22, 1 through 5 says, Then he showed me the river of living water, sparkling like crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the broad street in the city. The tree of life was on both sides of the river, bearing 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree are for healing the nations. There will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his slaves will serve him. By the way, this is why we turn to God and get our sins forgiven so that we can be his slaves in this city. Verse 4, they will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. Night will no longer exist and the people will not need lamplight or sunlight because the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. You know, the Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, I'm going to read a couple of this uh, verses, uh, verse 53, it says, For this corruptible must be clothed with incorruptibility, and this mortal must be clothed with immortality. When this corruptible is clothed with incorruptibility, and this mortal is clothed with immortality, then the saying that is written will take place. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Now the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the Lord's work, knowing that your labor is not labor in the Lord is not in vain. We have so much to look forward to. If the Lord comes back, I want to be on his side if he comes back while I'm still alive in this body. But you know what? Even if this body fails before he comes back, I still want to be on his side in his coming kingdom. Even if he has to make me a new body, which if he comes back soon, I hope he does anyway. But, you know, even if he has to make me a new body, I want to be on his side. And this really amazes me that in God's description of how bad things get in the human, in in our, in our world, how bad they get with our nations and our leaders and the peoples around us. Verse 10 is just such a powerful statement of looking forward to God's kingdom. Verse 10 of Isaiah 33 says, now I will rise up, says the Lord. Now I will lift myself up. Now I will be exalted. God knows the misery that sin brings, and he is going to bring his solution, which is himself. And therein lies our hope. But I want to leave you with this thought this morning. You look at the end here in verse 15. When it asks the question of who can dwell with a consuming fire, the answer is the one who lives righteously and speaks rightly, who refuses gain from extortion, whose hand never takes a bribe, who stops his ears from listening to murderous plots and shuts his eyes to avoid endorsing evil. By the way, we're speaking of a kingdom here, right? We're speaking of a ruler and the challenges that a ruler would live with, right? A ruler would struggle with living righteously and speaking rightly. A ruler would struggle with refusing gain from extortion. A ruler would struggle with a hand that never takes a bribe. A ruler would struggle about listening to murderous plots. A a ruler would struggle about uh, looking and endorsing evil. But there's a ruler coming who will not fail in those areas. This is not a human ruler. This is not based on you and I. This is based on the the perfection only attained attained through Jesus Christ. This is a picture of what our coming ruler will look like. He will dwell on the heights. His, His refuge will be the rocky fortress. Now get this, in a day of hand-to-hand combat, 
in a day where the mightiest weapon was the horse. A rocky fortress was an impossible place to destroy because it wasn't made with human hands. There's a fortress built by God out of rock. There aren't many that exist, but there are a few. And there's nothing better than a rocky fortress. And the stability of a rocky fortress is that the fortress itself will never fail. His refuge, the place where he dwells, where he takes the people who are his slaves, will be in us in the safest possible location. A rocky fortress. Oh, and by the way, in his rocky fortress, unlike the human ones, his food provided. In his place of stability, he will always have plenty to eat. His water is assured, meaning it cannot be taken away. You know, the only danger to camping out forever in a rocky fortress is having enough food and water. But in his kingdom, not only do you have that incredible stability, that word picture describe how safe it is, but on top of that, you not only have safety, but you have an abundance of food and a security of water, which means you don't need anything else. Except for, what does it God have in his storehouse? You'll need salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. Oh, which, by the way, he has plenty of to offer. Thank God for his coming kingdom. Thank God for the encouragement and the beauty that he provides in this comparison between our kingdoms and his kingdom. Well, today, I'm sure you could join me on our uh, national holiday um, of independence and say that we're thankful to live in America. We are all thankful, I hope. If not, you should check yourself. You have a lot to be thankful for. But you know what? I'm so much more thankful and excited to be, to be a member of God's kingdom and to look forward to what he has promised. And that through the Messiah, all the things that we see all earthly kingdoms failing in, he will not fail in. And he will be the security and the, and the food and the water provided all that we need. And thank God for that. Next week, as we continue on in Isaiah 33, Caleb will be bringing a message um, where the passage starts, your eyes will see the king in his beauty. And we look forward to some more on that study next week. But let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the power of your truth. We're thankful for the power of your kingdom. Lord, we're thankful for the joy it is to worship and praise the name of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, we're thankful that in your coming kingdom, we can, we can rejoice to be your slaves. That we will have the privilege of serving you in that kingdom. And thank you, Lord, that you have chosen to call us your children and to grant us the privilege of reigning with you forever and ever. Lord, if there's anyone here this morning who is not confident that they are serving you and part of your kingdom, Lord, I pray that you'd bring them to that confidence through repentance and putting their faith in Jesus Christ. And Lord, for those of us who know you're a Savior, Lord, I'm sure that everyone here is dealing with weights and challenges that exist simply because of the curse of sin. And Father, I pray that you would give us the grace and the strength that we need to get through these challenges, praising your name and looking forward to the kingdom that you will bring that removes all of the pain and wipes all the tears. And even so, Lord, come quickly to establish that kingdom. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. For musicians would come for our closing hymn. The closing hymn is number 273, When He Shall Come. Let's uh, stand and sing. The words will also be behind me on the screen. Let's stand and sing, When He Shall Come.
benediction now unto him who is able to keep keep you from falling and to present you spotless before the throne to the only wise god be power and honor and glory and dominion both now and forevermore in whose name we pray amen god bless you go in peace